What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we are going to do some more dyno testing with the 69 Corvette. Um, Ryan's got the tranny out right now and the converter is draining. We're gonna go ahead and put a new stator in, get back on the dyno. See if we can't find the power that we lost when we put this converter in. Um, this was kind of the plan to have to change stators and that's why we ended up going with a bolt together converter because these combos are just so different than anything else. Um, we need to be able to change stators and get this thing 100% as accurate as we can. Um, so stator number two is in that box and you guys watched us dyno it uh, probably a couple of months ago now. And uh, yeah, it just didn't perform like we wanted. So, uh, but before we show you what we did right here, um, I'm gonna show you a t-shirt. This is actually the first time we have shown this t-shirt on the channel i've showed pictures of it but never an actual uh video of the t-shirt we're gonna do 20 percent off all t-shirts um heck i don't know for how long maybe till they sell out should we do it till they sell out well one car isn't gonna be racing it anymore yeah maybe maybe yeah we'll do 20 percent off till they sell out so we've got a big shelf of them um Gonna try to move these things quickly. Once we start the new racing season, probably go with a new t-shirt. Um, quick update on what we've been doing. So this is a customer's car that I've been working on for a while now. And started putting a 25.5 bar in, and I think we're going to end up going with a 25.3, which is gonna make this thing good to 650, I think. I'm not sure. The only thing I'm gonna have to do Let's run two bars down here. I'm um, doing X brace on the roof instead of just one bar. And then gussets pretty much everywhere. That's the only difference. Um, it'll pretty much look like this when it's done. That's the 25.3. Uh, good to 650. They wanted a cage good to 750, but I don't know. It just kind of turned out this way. Um, thing looks really nice. It's tucked real tight to the headliner. See up here, it's tucked real nice. Um, it actually has turned out uh, super clean. I've been working on that thing, and my dad, uncle, and grandpa have been working on the 67. So here's pretty much how she sits right now. Um, it's got some glass in it, and right now they're working on putting the glass on the other side. Um, we're going to be doing a radio delete, I believe, and heater delete in this thing. So we got to figure out what to do with the dash. We're not pulling the dash out because you got to drill these rivets out. And right now they're just all painted and everything looks nice. We just don't want to do that. This side is pretty much done. Um, door handles and stuff are on. It's got little things like, you know, all the chrome and trim pieces and taillights in it. Um, so the thing is coming along nice. Dang, it looks really good in this camera. The color does. I really like the color of it. But we've started putting some things on the inside. Uh, my dad actually painted the floor and the firewall. That ended up turning out really nice. And then if you guys remember, we did put a front end on it. So we're not painting the inner fenders any because that's kind of the way they're supposed to look. That somewhat of a fiberglass look to it. Frame is over here. And right now we're just mocking up the front end to measure for shocks. Uh, my grandpa and uncle actually put this together the other day and I got in there with a tape measure and measured for shocks. So we need to get some shocks ordered for it. We've never actually run these Global West bushings, but so we're going to try them on this car. My dad's actually got a trick that he's done to his car to be able to run stock bushings and the control arm will move free. But these were just laying in the shop and we decided to give them a try. So these are greasable and right now they're like need a lot of grease because they're Oh, they move halfway decent, but they uh, get to grease them, and then we'll uh, doll them up, paint them black, make them look good. Um, but pretty much all this thing has right now is the fuel line, the steering box, and this stuff, which is going to probably come back off before it actually gets put totally together. Still waiting on brakes from TBM. They ended up building a, they were in the process of building a front brake kit for these. We actually sent them a rear control arm assembly to be able to build us a rear kit for it. Uh, so those are in process. I actually talked to Doug 
over there at uh, Motion Raceworks the other day. And hopefully we can have the brakes here in a couple weeks. Ordered a bunch of stuff from Steve at DragVet for the rear end. None of that stuff has come in neither. So that's kind of why we haven't been doing videos on this thing yet is because we're pretty much waiting on everything. I don't even know what we have over here in the boxes. A bunch of, like that's a Z bar. Oh, that's for this. I don't think any of this stuff's for that. As you guys can see, we got some glass here, um, little tiny trim pieces, the valve covers I'm going to run. That's just a joke. Um, do have the rear end. So this is the pig assembly. I'm glad it came over here. Um, I have to put a rear gear in that because we broke it on the dyno. Actually, this was in my dad's car um probably not even a year ago and we broke it on the dyno um this is a 12 bolt ring and pinion inside a factory corvette housing you can see there's just a little bit of grinding you need to do on uh, the rear end housing and then i probably don't have a flashlight right you got a flashlight on you i don't know how to turn my flashlight on my phone while i'm using it but you can see right there how much you got to grind to get the 12 bolt ring and pinion in it just ever so slightly up there in the top and then a little bit in the back um right by the pinion you see that pinion's just sheer that thing is a mess i've never looked that close at it uh, a little bit down there you gotta grind but uh other than that these are just uh factory housings see we've got upgraded stub shafts these are 30 spline it's right here actually slides into the rear end like that that is this piece and then uh we'll have upgraded stub shafts here or axle flanges whatever the heck you want to call them um that'll come out to here and then we'll be able to bolt on uh half 20 lug studs instead of these 7 16 ones um this rear end assembly was actually going to go in the car when we were going to restore it back to original but now that it's becoming a race car um that's going to get pushed to the side after we get our parts back from motion raceworks or tb and brakes and uh that'll just get put in a storage container um but yeah this is all the parts we got for it right now this is just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff um we just had Chick-fil-A for dinner. Here's the grills. This thing is actually very nice. Um, it's heavy, but it's nice. Here's the uh, heater delete plate that we're gonna put in it. So yeah, that's pretty much an update on the 67. That's exactly where we're at with it. Um, I know I told you guys we were gonna do a bunch of videos on it this winter, and uh, we just haven't really been working on it. So May 12th and 13th is when that car has to be done. And that is exactly two months away from right now. Today is the 13th. Um, so I feel pretty good about it. We're gonna get it knocked out fairly quick. All right, so we're gonna skip right to the video where Ryan ripped this thing apart. Um, I'm gonna put it back together, get it on the dyno and see what kind of improvements we made.
right, so we got this thing on the dyno with the new converter. Ryan's draining out the old fuel, putting some Q16 in it. We are looking for something around the 715, 720 range, right up here. You can see our new converter that we put in started falling on its face real soon. Um, we've learned that that just means it's too loose of a converter, which is actually what the orange Camaro had the entire time that it ran. Um, but we're, move, we're looking to move this peak power that was 6,900 with the new converter to about where the old converter was at, uh, uh, it's going to say 713, 720, something like that, 712, 725. So that's what we're looking for. Is it me or does it sound really lazy? It sounds like it's fatter. I don't, I'm gonna have to look at them. It just sounded lazy. Not bad. That sounded like it was like dead a cylinder or something. The plug might have been just loaded up. I think might have had a plug that was loaded. It always does. Let me check the plug wires. Nitrous button. 12, 4, 12, 5. Yeah, the vacuum pump on. Yeah. Check the plugs at the, or the wires at the plug. Check this side. Yeah. All right, well, that was a, a quick lesson on the wrong stator and the torque converter. So let me show you what we got going on here. Pretty much uh, this purple is this run we just made. Comes up here to about seven grand, makes peak power, and then just falls on his face. And there at 7,600, we're down almost 40 horse, a little over 40 horsepower. Um, that's where the car likes to run. Need to get our logs and all this information sent back to the converter company and see what they want to do from here. Um, possibly get another stator that's tighter. This one should have tightened it up a bunch and it actually didn't tighten it up hardly any, if anything, like less than 100 RPM. Um, so we're getting it off the dyno right now. Uh, talk to the converter company in the morning and see what we got. We have a good base converter that we could go with that we've always run in this thing. If you settle and just go with what you got, then you never know if you can make it any better. So right now we're just trying to get every little last bit out of everything we can. All right, well, that was a little disappointing, but sometimes you gotta go backwards before you can go forwards. Uh, gonna get all this information back to the converter company, see if we can't build us a new stator or possibly a new converter and uh, see if we can't finally dial converters in. As you guys know, we've been struggling with figuring out torque converters um, pretty much since we started putting the Camaro together and we had questions. I just ran the converter in the Camaro for two years 
and finally learned that it was the wrong converter and now we want to make sure we've got the right stuff in all of our cars our cars are real hard to figure out it's not like the converter companies have built a bunch of converters for our type for the type of racing we do um, so it's really just trial and error until you you figure it out um, we may learn something we may go quicker or we just may learn that the converter we've been running is uh, the best we can get and we'll just have to go back to that but got the 67 push back in here and hopefully here very soon we can start uh, working on this thing and posting up some videos um, my uncle actually helped us out a little bit today and scraped all the sound deadening out of it um, and then we started building a radio delete panel. Um, this car is going to be heater delete and radio delete. We messed up and didn't fill that in, but this thing was actually supposed to be getting restored and not turned into a race car when we painted it. Um, but we're going to build something to slide over uh, the radio and the knobs because the radio delete panel actually is totally filled in. And then the heater delete gets like these little push pin looking things that go in there. Um, so instead of cutting up this dash or ruining this dash, um, we're just going to build a panel that goes in like that, and you won't be able to tell the difference. So this thing is still a real 427, 435 horse car, even though we're going to cut it up and put a roll cage and stuff in it. We still don't want to take away things like the dash and make it so that it can't go back to original. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, waiting on rear end parts. Oh, we got the little GM logo in there. Look at that. We are waiting on rear end parts. Um, like I said earlier, I got to put the rear gear and that differential. And then we can start assembling the frame some more. Once we get this thing almost a, pretty much a roller, we'll go ahead and put the body on. And then I'll start building the roll cage and stuff like that. Um, we're still waiting on a headliner and let's see door panels came in carpet came in and then we've got all these pieces um then still gotta build a back seat for it because this thing's got to be a four seater because um yeah it just has to be um, see my dad painted the armrest right there and this white is going to be very hard to keep clean but that is the color of the interior that's actually the original piece out of the car that he just died so um yeah that's gonna be about it for this video so don't forget we have t-shirts we're doing 20 percent off on those until we pretty much run out um, we've got a good amount of those left if we do sell out we'll print more of them um that's not that big of a deal but uh yeah 20 percent off on t-shirts from now till who knows when hopefully get you guys some more videos here pretty soon waiting on the weather to break to drive the trans am i've actually got half of a video filmed for that and it's just been nothing but rain and snow and rain and snow um, for like the last month almost. Um, so I'd like to get that thing out on the road and drive it. It is like 99.2% done. There's a couple little things to do to that. Um, so maybe do that. And then I think I'm going to do a video when I actually drive the Blue ZL1 down to Tennessee. Um, go to the Tail of Dragon in it. And we actually rebuilt the Blue ZL1 on the channel, if you guys remember that. Um, so... Might put a camera on the car, do a quick little video down there. But I'm uh, going to try to do some more videos for you guys. And uh, once the weather starts breaking, we can get back to our normal stuff and do stuff outside. Um, right now, we're just kind of waiting on parts for this kind of stuff. And uh, it's just I don't know, kind of hard to film videos without any parts. But that's going to wrap this video up. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.